Hello, welcome to the lecture number 31 of the course Quantum Mechanics and Molecular Spectroscopy. In the previous lecture, we were talking about the harmonic oscillator and its selection rules. So, we will continue with the same topic. So, if you have a molecule or a AB molecule has a potential something like that. Okay. So, this I will call it as 0 and this will be some V naught okay. and there is an R equilibrium distance RE that is the if you consider bond AB, okay, the equilibrium distance is RE and this is the potential energy function as a function of R. This is nothing but the potential energy. So, the energy. So, at the bottom of this well, okay, one can write the potential as a Taylor series expansion. So, your V is equal to at equilibrium is nothing but V naught minus dV by dr at Re into R plus 1 over 2 factorial is nothing but 2 d square V by dr square at Re equilibrated Re plus R square plus mi minus 1 over 3 factorial d cube v by d r cube evaluated r e into r cube plus 1 over 4 factorial d to the power of 4 v by d r to the power of 4 evaluated r e r to the power of 4 plus etc. Okay? Now, one can always measure energies with respect to some value and if that value is V0, so measure energies relative to, to V0. That means, if I measure energies with relative, so I can equate this to be 0. Now, the second thing is dV by dr, we are at the bottom of the potential. So, when you are at bottom of the potential, the first derivative will go to 0. So, this will go to 0 because bottom of the, the potential. Or same as a minimum energy in the potential. Okay. Then you are left with and if I ignore higher order terms, oh, that means I will ignore third order, higher order means third order which is this order 3, fourth order. which is this. So, if I ignore that, okay, ignore means basically going to 0. So, what I will do is I will also take this to 0 and this to 0. So, what I am left with V is equal to half d square V by d r square evaluated to r e r square where r is the intermolecular distance or interatomic distance in this case. So, if you have a potential okay, where R is the interatomic distance, then what you have is the then what you have is the V equals to half d square v by or approximately equal to d r square 
it evaluated r e r square. Okay. This I will write it as half k r square where k is nothing but d square v by d r square evaluated r e. Okay. And now if you write the total energy Hamiltonian h is equal to minus h bar square by 2 mu del square r okay now where if you have a and b connected and mu is nothing but m a m b divided by m a plus m b okay and r is the coordinate so this r is nothing but internal coordinate okay plus half k r square so this is my hamiltonian for harmonic oscillator Okay. Now, harmonic oscillator is just a model that represents a AB bond. Okay. Now, one of the problems with harmonic oscillators is that, so when I draw harmonic oscillator, harmonic oscillator is with respect to some RE and will sh should something like that. So, harmonic oscillator never breaks. Okay. It can, the potential can raise up to infinity. But all chemical bonds between molecule atom A and B, they can break, they will break eventually. If you keep stretching, they will break. So, harmonic oscillator in some sense is a not a good representation for a chemical bond. However, at the bottom of the potential, that means around the equilibrium geometry, harmonic oscillator is a reasonably good model and we use harmonic oscillator to represent bonds when they are at the equilibrium position. Okay. Now, if you have this harmonic oscillator, then of course, your Hamiltonian as I just said is nothing but minus h bar square by 2m del square r minus a plus half k r square and where k is nothing but d v d square v by d r square <coughs> evaluated r e okay this is nothing but your force constant okay <coughs> now the problem here is the following the thing is that this force constant is only the second order term okay and we are in such case we are ignoring the higher order terms the third order and the fourth order terms which a normal molecule or a normal uh, diatomic molecule AB would have or harmonic oscillator is an approximation. Now, if your harmonic oscillator is an approximation and we know r is just a dummy variable. So, I am going to rewrite this whole thing in some other variable x. So, instead of r I can always use another variable x and that would be minus h bar square by 2 mu del square x plus half k x square. This is going to be my Hamiltonian h vibrational okay now you have this hamiltonian one can solve for it there are two methods to solve this okay one is called ladder operator method and other is the series method so essentially you are going to solve a second order differential equation 
Okay. So, this can be written as minus h bar square by 2 mu t square by dx square plus half kx square this into some function chi of x okay, h vibrational into chi of x is equal to e chi of x that is going to be a solution for it. But when you solve either by either of the method okay, whatever we, one can solve by uh, whichever is convenient method and there are textbooks like uh, um, molecular quantum mechanics by Atkins or quantum, quantum chemist by Ira and Levine where you can find the solutions. Okay. You can use either of the method and of course, it is only one differential equation. So, depending on which method you use or the solution that come out should not depend on the method that you use. Okay. Now, I am just going to write the solutions. So, when you solve this using one of these two methods, what you get is the following your chi of x okay, will depend on a quantum number v okay, that is a vibrational quantum number is equal to E v chi of x. Okay. So, that is going to be your quantum number where you can show that E v is equal to v plus half h nu e okay, where nu e is nothing but 2 pi omega e. Okay, where nu e is nu e is frequency and omega is angular frequency. But there is one thing that you must understand that there is this value k and this value k and this nu e should be related in some way. Okay. Uh, sorry, this is not uh, that should be the right one. Okay. No. So, how is it related? So, the k that is the force constant is related to uh, mu omega e square or this is nothing but 4 pi square mu nu e square. So, the force constant k is proportional to nu e square. So, that means the vibrational frequency is uh, proportional to square root of the force constant. That means, if you increase the force constant, the vibrational frequency will increase. So, that is what we already know. So, if the bond becomes more stiffer, the vibrational frequency will increase. Okay. Stiffness is measured by the force content x. So, this is a measure of stiffness of a bond. Okay. Now, the problem, so what we are going to solve the Schrodinger equation at hand for the vibration h v i b vibration chi v of x is equal to minus h bar square by 2 mu d square by d x square plus half k x square into chi vibration of x okay, is equal to E vibration into chi vibration of x. So, that is your chi. Now, we, I just said that E v equals to half plus v h nu e this also equal to 
half plus v h bar omega v. And here v is the vibrational quantum number. And that goes from 0, 1, 2, 3 up to infinity. Okay. Now, the, this, uh, the solutions for this would be, okay. so you have what you have, you have h vibration of chi v of x is equal to E v of chi v of x and you are chi v of x will be some uh, normalization count of n of v exponential minus alpha x square by 2 h v alpha to the power of half x. Okay? This is the form Okay, this is the form of the form of the solution. Okay, now where this one is the normalization constant, and this is your Gaussian function. And this is the Hermite polynomial. Okay. Now, one thing that I have written is your alpha, which I have not written, is equal to mu omega by h bar. Okay. Alpha is some kind of a no, uh, some kind of a weighting, weighted coordinate, coordinate. See, because you are multiplying with x, so it is kind of a weighting of the coordinate. So this is actually is called mass weighting. Weighing or mass weighing. Okay. So one can always write, or generally in the textbook, it is written that alpha to the power of half x equals to y. If you write, if I make that transformation, then what happens to you is your chi v will now become function of y. By the way, x and y are not different functions like uh, orthogonal variables, like what we are used in Cartesian coordinate. x is y is just a transformation of x. Okay, chi of y is equal to n v exponential okay y square by 2 exponential y square by 2 h v of y okay so just trying to become more easier to represent or write okay and i told you this is nothing but your normalization constant And this is nothing but your um, Gaussian function. And this is the Hermite polynomial. Okay. When you solve, it turns out that the Hermite polynomials have dependencies. That means there is generating function. The recursion relationship is H e plus 1 of y is equal to 2y h v of y minus 2 nu sorry. so let me read let me. h v plus 1 of y is equal to 2y h v of y plus 
two v h v minus one of y, and I can get the generating functions. So what I get is h zero of y is equal to one. H one of y is equal to two y. H two of y is equal to four y square minus two. H three of y is equal to eight y cube minus twelve y. H four of y will give me sixteen y to the power of four minus forty eight y square plus twelve. H five of y is equal to thirty <coughs> two uh, y to the power of five minus one sixty y cube plus one twenty five. Okay. Now you can see h zero of y is only one. H y of y is two y. So at y is equal to zero, it will go to zero. So this will have one node. This will have two nodes because it's a quadratic equation. This will have three nodes because it's a cubic equation. It will have four nodes. It is a quadratic equation, and this is a uh, will have five nodes. So when I draw, okay, but all of them are the Hermite polynomials which are riding over your um, Gaussian function. So when I draw them, so v is equal to zero, I'll get a Gaussian function. Okay. Now for v is equal to one. I'll get a, but this is so one can imagine. So this is y is equal to zero or equilibrium. Okay, so we'll get this function, and the third case we'll get. So the if you look at the functions, they will look like particle in a box function. So they can always be represented like this. So. Something like that. Okay, they look like particle in a box function, but particle in a box functions are sinusoidal function. Here they are Gaussian functions that are modulated by the uh, Hermite polynomials. Okay, so this is v is equal to zero, v equals to one, v is equal to two. So you can always see that the functions become odd and even as the um, quantum number. Okay, so. This v is equal to zero is a even function. V is equal to one will be odd function. V is equal to two will be even function, and so on. Okay. So for the even quantum numbers, the function is a even function, and for odd quantum number, it is a uh, odd function. So if I look back, my h, uh, my uh, not h, but chi. Of y is equal to a v is equal to some constant uh, v uh, that's normalization constant e to the e to the exponential minus y square by two. Okay, I'm not very sure. Oh, this should have been a negative sign here. I'm sorry about that. So this should have been a negative sign here. Uh, okay, there is a negative sign here already there, so I just missed. So minus y square by two. H. Now one thing that I want to tell you is very simply, is that when you have the uh, Hermite uh, wave function chi of uh, v, okay. And now I'm writing in terms of y. This is nothing but some normalization constant n of v. e to the power of uh, exponential minus y square by 2 h v of y but we said y is nothing but alpha to the power of half into x where alpha is equal to um, What was the value of alpha? Mu omega by h bar. Yeah, that's what it is. Alpha is this. Okay. Now mu is the if you have a and b masses, mu is a constant. Omega is also constant because omega is nothing but is related to 
omega is related to square root of k okay and k is related to the potential. So, this also is a constant h bar is a constant. So, alpha is a constant. So, alpha to the power of half will also be a constant. That means when you have y to the power of alpha x, okay, the behavior of y or the shape of the function of y will be any a variable y will be same as the variable x. Okay. So, h v of x transformed to h v of y will have a same shape except that the, the y will get multiplied by. So, that means the uh, depending on the value of alpha the scale will either elongate or shrink. If alpha is greater than 1 then the scale will expand and alpha if so this will lead to expansion of the scale. and alpha is less than 1 this will be uh, instead of expansion it will the scale will shrink. Okay. But it will not change the way the function will look like the shape of the function will remain constant. Okay. So, you have the functions of or Eigen functions of your harmonic oscillators as exponential uh, Gaussian functions multiplied by the Hermite polynomials, okay, and will look like oscillator is a representation of vibrational wave function, which we will continue in the next lecture. Thank you.